They say life is full of ups and downs. I was in the middle of a down when I met Captain Howdy. He was a stowaway in an old trunk that I had bought. An old trunk that I had bought from a lady who was even older. Things just seemed to change after that. I'm still Jeff, Jeff Barron, but I doubt I'll ever be quite the same. Growing up in the suburbs alienated me from the city and the country. It's neither and it feels like neither. Sure, I could drive to either the country or the city, but actually living in a particular environment is far different. I was out of a job, a damn good one too. Managing a materials packaging wing in a plastics company certainly doesn't seem like the first choice job of a guy bent on living life to the fullest, but it paid well. None of that was really what bothered me now. It was the memories of that cold pond, just outside of the suburbs, where the pavement met the west and the trees mocked every building just over the road. Those memories, unclear like the water in that murky bottomless abyss that took my little brother's life. I was the brother that he looked up to and I wasn't there to pull him from the water that day. It was also the last fight that we had and that we never made up, not ever. My autistic brother got the blame, but I knew deep in the places that I didn't want to face that I was really to blame. That's where Captain Howdy came in. It was almost 1 p.m. in the afternoon, and I was still wearing what I had slept in. A parcel truck dropped off a package and took my mind temporarily off the feeling of being a loser, a feeling I was fighting harder by the day. I was still a collector at heart, antiques of all kinds. Now, after countless nights on eBay, I had bought the wardrobe trunk of my dreams. I had less than 45 minutes to make it to the meeting that was an hour's drive, but I simply had to see the wardrobe trunk right away. I would have been smarter to have left it packed for the move, but the little kid in me lashed out and I liked the feeling of being excited about something. The box that held the trunk wasn't padded very well and I wasn't very impressed with the packing job, but Lily, the lady who sold it to me, was very old, however pleasant to trade emails with. She had assured me that the trunk was original and had been in the family for some time. Inside was a letter from her. Dear Jeff, I'm sure this trunk will be a grand addition to your new home. Best regards, Lily Fredrickson. A flat box sat still in the back bottom corner. I lifted the box and opened the panels with no effort. No tape encumbered my journey to see what was inside. There it was, an old, well-worn Ouija board, probably from the 40s. A gift? Why was it in this trunk? A feeble old woman forgetting her things? Her treasures? A mistake? I began to struggle with calling her to tell her, or leaving well enough alone and keeping the unexpected treasure to myself. I chose to take the drive to my meeting and decide later if my conscience would prevail. I knew the house I was going to look at wouldn't be new like the one Kim and I had lived in. I was now happy to finally leave that house anyway. That new house had ghosts. Not real ghosts, just the ones that stuck around from the abandoned dreams that Kim and I had. The dreams of having children with them out back playing in the pool. The one that we never got around to having installed. The children we never got around to having. The boat we never got around to buying, but saved up for so we could escape off into the sunset. Escape into that big pond that little Stephen took his last breath in. Kim thought it would do me good to face the pond and clear my mind. It all sounded good to me then. Now it seemed like nothing more than psychobabble. If my new house would be an old one, well, that would be fine by me. That needs a lot of work, but right now I've got a lot of time. I'll, I think I'm going to take it. How soon can they, the owners be out? The well, owner passed away a couple weeks ago. Can't find any next to kin, so it's basically open. What about all the furniture and stuff? The banks may sell it as is. You know, if you can use the furniture, you're welcome to it. Otherwise, I'll call the auction house, have it cleaned out. 
Well, you know, the ex-wife about cleaned me out anyway. I, I think I'll just go ahead and take it furnished. What I don't need, I'll, I'll have a yard sale with. I'll write it up, give you a call in the morning. Is it okay if I poke around a bit tonight? Yeah, go ahead. Just, just don't tell anybody I told you you could. Have fun. Thanks. Good morning. Hey, Jeff, did I wake you up? No, no, I've been up for a while. Who's this? Yeah, it's Steve, the real estate agent. Oh, hey, Steve, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Oh, real good. Yeah, your offer got accepted. Oh, hey, that's great news. We can close pretty quickly. Yeah, well, will, will it still go furnished, everything included? Oh, yeah, keep whatever you want. Oh, good. Can we meet and close on Thursday? Yeah, Thursday's great. Uh-huh. You just need to check for the balance. Okay. Let me know if anything changes. Just don't forget, 5 o'clock. <laughs> no, I won't forget. It's a done deal. Hey, thanks for the call, Steve. I'll, I'll see you then. All right, see you then. Okay, bye-bye. I don't know why I said yes so fast to buying that old house. I guess it just felt right. They say people buy on emotion. I guess I was never much of a businessman anyway. There was a place for me to work and grow a garden. A garden would make Mother happy. I was beginning to feel hope once again, and hope was something I hadn't felt for a while. But for today, I would have to settle for a late lunch somewhere in town. Then later, I'd face another night in Kim and I's old place and deal with my old ghosts once again. Things Forgotten, an antique store. The little antique shop was tucked away at the back of what seemed to once be an idea for a kind of mini shopping center. The place was newer, but made to look old. I like the effort in such things. A tip of the hat to the old with a face to the future. Just like me. A bell chimed as I walked in the door. An old lady was mumbling out loud to anyone who might hear her. I was more concerned that she would start talking to me. I didn't want to talk to anyone, really. Well, I'm not paying those prices. A chuckle swept the room as the breeze from the door closed. <laughs> then an angel appeared to me wearing a red rose in her hair. Sometimes, but she's harmless enough. Are you looking for something? Hey, yeah, do you have any Ouija boards? No, not right now. I get them in sometimes, but I deal mostly in the older ones. Um, Captain Howdy and stuff like that. What kind are you looking for? Oh. I didn't know there was different kinds. There's a, there's a new age shop in Parker if you want a newer one. Oh, actually I just wound up with one and I really don't know anything about it. Well, you can bring it in sometime and I'll tell you what I can about it. Um, I'm not an authority, but I know a thing or two about them. The old ones bring in a few bucks. Um, they used to make them out of the wood of a coffin. They used to use the nail of a coffin as the pointer. Those bring in the real bucks. But, um, are you from out of town? Well, I'm from out of town, but I just bought the old place out on Clayton Road, so I guess I'm kind of local now, but I don't close until Thursday, so I can't really say that because I'm still from out of town, so. Well, then you're a local out-of-towner. Welcome to our little slice of the world. I'm Kristen. We touched. She was Hi, almost Kristen, surreal. Jeff. You and your husband own this place? Nope. Just me and Carter. My cat. I'm married to him. He's my soulmate in a cat suit. <laughs> I was thinking of getting a dog now that I'm living out in the country. I've always wanted a dog. I felt like my response was uncreative compared to hers. I sounded pathetic. I felt like I could have gone on about how I was always made to feel irresponsible as a child. I refrained from mauling this angel with my mundane banter. The burbs, you know. Mm. How about you? Well, I was born in Connecticut and uh, we moved to San Fran when I was about 11. I used to come up here and buy some things from my dad's antique store. And I just uh, fell in love with the place. So quiet and serene and cheap. Are you a businessman? Well, how can I explain this without sounding like a loser? I felt like I was yelling at her, even though I never raised my voice. I was just embarrassed, I guess. Here, starting over. You know, fresh start. 
No matter how awkward I said any of my words or how unlike my background was from hers, she seemed to accept every part of me, almost like we were supposed to meet that day. Kristen seemed familiar, although I knew we had never met. The way she emphasized her words and parted her lips made me wonder if I had just created her out of a dream. Yet, here I was, sure that I had walked into a real place with real things and really wondering where she had been all of my life. Sometimes it makes me feel a little out of place, you know? I know what you mean. You know, so far I kind of feel pretty alien out here myself. Yeah, well, maybe we both just needed a friend. Yeah, maybe. I was either face to face with an angel or I was being led on by the devil. I really didn't care. She was exactly what I needed. Dear Jeff, hope this email finds you well. I'm sure this trunk will be a grand addition to your new home. My late husband made it when we were first married. I'm pretty new at this internet thing, so if you have any questions, please call. It's just easier for an old lady like myself who likes to talk to a real human voice now and again. Yours truly, Lily Fredrickson. Oh, hello, Mrs. Fredrickson? No, um, hello, may I ask if calling? Oh, this is Jeff, Jeff Barron. I had bought an, an old trunk from her last week, and, and, um, uh, there... Well, I'm afraid my mother passed away last night during sleep. Oh, God, I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, jeez. Well, I can well she was a sickly lady, but still, we were a bit surprised. Who are you again? My name's Jeff. Jeff Barron. I'm, I'm out in California. I had, like I said, I had purchased a, a beautiful antique trunk from her, and I received it. And there, there's an old Ouija board inside. It seems she had forgotten to, to take it out or something. I, I thought that maybe I should, should send it back to you. Oh, Captain Howdy. Oh, um, you need to get rid of that damn thing. Mom was always trying to pawn that thing off on somebody. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Captain Howdy. No, no, this is, uh, it's an old Ouija. No, I know what it is. It's an old Ouija board game. Just bury it. <laughs> bury it? No, it, it, it must belong to somebody. I thought that... Th yes, bury it. Just, just bury it. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye now. Well, she's again, my condolences. I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about your mother. I... I read Lily's email once again. It was like a ghost letter. Did she know that she wasn't for this earth much longer? If so, what does that feel like? I didn't like thinking about it. I didn't like the idea of dying, even though there were times I didn't like the idea of living either. I decided that I should visit mother right away. She was all I had left. Afterwards, I would move the trunk into the new place tonight. I needed the symbolic nurturing of making a new life for myself right away. After all, tomorrow, the house would officially be mine anyway. How are you, Mom? 
blessed. Blessed by the Lord, Jeff. You eating enough? You always look thin to me. Yeah, Mom, I'm eating real good. You know what they say, Jeff. You have to take time to be healthy. Or make Gotta time make time to be sick. sick. <laughs> yeah, I know, Mom. Hey, listen, Mom, I, I'm moving. I, I found a nice little place out in the country. Are you going to plant flowers in the garden, Jeff? The Lord yeah. likes when they grow things. Circle of nature. Something that Kim woman never knew nothing about. Yeah, I'm going to plant some things. Hey, listen, Mom. Are you getting along okay? I mean, I mean, is everything... Me? I'm surrounded by love, Jeff. It's you I'm worried about. Mom, I'm fine. I... You? You're surrounded by deceit. Mom, listen. I just... No, you listen. As long as you're obsessed with material things, like that horrible Kim woman, as long as you're obsessed with things that go against God's will... Mom, stop it. I'm not obsessed with anything. You think living all the way out here, judging other people, is doing God's will? You know what? I don't need this shit. You know, I come all the way out here to see how you're doing it. It's the same old lecture every time. Fuck. Don't you dare curse at me in here. Yeah, whatever, Mom. Love you. Goodbye. To compound all of my frustrations, I felt the van starting to cock to one side and I could feel and hear the right rear tire flapping. I figured that I better get this off the road fast before I massacre my rim. This was just great, nighttime in the boonies with a flat. Fate was twisting, trading places with all of my new hopes. I knew there wasn't a good spare, but I climbed in the back to check out the one I had anyway. Jeff, are you in there? I thought my heart was going to drop to the floor. It was then that I realized that the angel had appeared once again. It was Kristen, driving back from town after picking up some takeout food. She spotted the van and knew it was me. She first offered me a ride back home, then insisted on sharing some Chinese food with me, telling me that the guys at the restaurant always gave her extra. So I probably would have given her extra food. too. They give me handfuls of fortune cookies. I showed her the antique trunk that I had bought from Lily off of eBay. She was particularly interested in the Ouija board that I had told her about. I know nothing about them. I just, it looked cool. We decided to go to Kristen's antique store. We could eat and look up the value of my new little treasure in one of her antique value guides. Fate had twisted once more. However, I had no idea just how twisted it was about to become. Oh, I'm sorry. I that, that lamp. It looks like one my family used to have. Oh, that one's French. A lot of them came over here after the war. Do you want to go eat over here? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Come on. Hey, Jeff, are you okay with chopsticks or you want a fork? Oh, Kristen, I'm, I'm awkward with, with chopsticks. Well, then a fork it is. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so hungry. Ouija board out. 
Yeah, do you have that book handy? We can see how much it's worth. I do, but I think we should just play with it first. Oh, Kristen, I don't know. I, I'm just not into that kind of thing. Those things, they're silly. So what if it's silly? I'm silly. I think we should play with it. Do you know how, you know how these things work? I do, it's simple. Put it in the middle. Let's see, hand me Here's that. The thing. This is uh this is called a pawn chip. You just put your fingers on it lightly, like this, and then just ask it a question. You wanna do it? Oh, that's goofy. So what if it's goofy? What if it works? <laughs> these things these things don't work. Call me now for your free spiritual reading. Okay, what the hell? Let's have some fun. We'll go for it. Let's let's play we can with do it. Okay, you ready? Just put your hands on it. Okay. Jeff, not that hard. You gotta touch it so lightly. Okay, now ask it a question. Me? <laughs> Why me? It was your idea. You're the one that wanted to play. All right, then I'll ask it a question. Captain Howdy. What's Jeff's favorite color? So is it supposed to do anything? Shh. Concentrate. Jeff, why'd you do that? It's, it's not doing anything. You gotta give it a chance. I think we should do it again. Okay, we'll, we'll go one more time. Okay. Put your finger down. Okay. I'm gonna ask him another question. Captain Howdy, does Jeff like me? I lost my little brother in the pond. But he was little and so was I. I... I... Are you there? No, no, my... No, my autistic older brother was and I should have been. I... I went off riding my little brother's bike and... I had and I shouldn't have had my older brother Thomas go instead. I'd always cover for him when he did things wrong, and he'd cover for me when I did things wrong. But Thomas didn't know how to swim. They went too far out in the water, and Stephen got caught on a rock that was all balled up in some chain link fence that someone had thrown in there. And his pants got snagged. Only his mouth was barely out of the water. Thomas panicked and swam to shore, and. <clears throat> I can still see his eyes just as he took his last breath. And... Did Thomas tell you that? Tell me what? What he looked like when he... How, when he... how... You know what, I don't think we should play this anymore. 
No, Kristen, I don't think we should play either. I don't think we should play anymore. Jeff, I'm sorry. Do you know what? Maybe I should take you home. Yeah, Kristen, you know what? Maybe you should take me home. I'm here. I'm here. Jeff, I'm so sorry about last night. Don't be sorry. Uh, I really should have told you. I'm just not into that sort of thing. You did, Jeff. I just wasn't having it. I was being selfish. Kristen, you weren't being selfish at all. You just wanted to have fun, and it would have been fun if I wouldn't have been such a putz. Jeff, listen. I know today's moving day. I could help you later. Oh, I've got so little to move. It won't be a problem at all. I can take care of it on my own, but thanks for offering. Oh my god, I completely forgot about the tire. Jeez, I gotta close on the new house today, too. I can't do anything until I fix that tire. Hey, Jeff, hang on a second. No, Jackie, just sit him over there. Sorry, I'm back. I had to have my helper move something. How are you gonna get the van fixed? No, it won't be a problem at all. I'll just have my old neighbor, Doc, run me down the street to Don's wheel and tire. and We'll have an old tire, used tire put on it, and it won't take any time at all. It's no problem. Jeez, I wish I could help you, Jeff, but I have shipments coming that I have to sign for until about two or so. Then Jackie, my helper, can take over. Oh, like I said, Kristen, I have so little to move, it'll be a piece of cake. No problem at all, I'll just do it on my own. Are you sure I can't help you later? Well, if you want to help out later, you could always help me out with decorating and arranging a few things. Mm, no problem, Jeff, a woman's touch. <laughs> and most certainly a housewarming gifts in order. Oh, don't be crazy, that's not necessary. Oh, it'll be great to see you. I can't wait. I can't either. Okay, I'll talk to you then, Kristen. See you later on. Bye. Okay, bye. I had decided to go back to B's and D's Cafe. I liked it. I better like it. It was really the only thing out this way. They closed by 4 p.m. and it was now 3.30. The waitress looked a bit agitated that there was one more patron, me, sitting there waiting to be served. I'd worked as a busboy once, and I hated it when I thought I could get out early and people came piling in at the last minute. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just going to stick with what I had last time. No mind reader. What was that? Oh, uh, pancakes, please. No butter. Just like my son, I did like And also some coffee, please. Black. I was hungry, but still queasy from the sleeping pills. I didn't like taking anything, really, but I just couldn't sleep well anymore. Too many upsets in my life, I guess. I'd even out eventually. It was that damn Ouija board. It seemed to conjure up feelings in me that I, I didn't like dealing with. The trauma of Stephen's death was buried deep in me, deep where it belonged. I had remembered reading through some of Kim's psychology books. They maintain that traumatic memory is reconstruction and that all memory is subject to the ordinary process of misperception, distortion, decay, and change. So much of psychiatry is based on theories, much of it never proven but taken as the truth. Hell, even criminals were prosecuted or exonerated because of these theories. Psychiatrists becoming the new demigods of our mentally ailing culture. I was the perfect subject, a post-traumatic stress victim.
Kim. Jeff. What are you doing here? Well, it's your new house, Jeff. I knew you were closing today, and I thought I'd come by and I'd give you a housewarming gift. Well, aren't you going to invite me in? Oh, yeah, sure. Come on in. Rustic chic. <laughs> what, did Davy Crockett live here before? Kim, the guy died. I bought the place as is. It came furnished. You know what, Jeff? I'm proud of you. You're finally making moves on your own. It makes me proud. Oh, hold on. Hello? Yes, this is Kim. Anne? I told you I cannot have the contracts until the 9th. So stop calling me, okay? Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Oh, oh my. Oh. Wearing dresses these days, Jeff? Yeah, Kim. Uh, only on real estate closing days. <laughs> no, really. Are you seeing someone, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, Kim, as a matter of fact, I am. Oh, come on. Who is she, Jeff? Is she cute? <laughs> Kim, she's more than cute. She's beautiful. Where'd you meet her? At an antique store. Not that it's, like, really any of my business, but, uh, what's her dress doing here? Tacky thing that it is. I bought that for her, Kim. She likes things like that. You bought a new girlfriend an old dress? Was it for like a renaissance fair or something? Kim, please. We both love antiques. She, she's a very simple person. Not like me, Jeff. Right, Kim, not like you. She, uh, she doesn't need so many things. You know what things I don't need, Jeff? I don't need this marriage, and I never have. What in the hell do you mean by that, Kim? I felt bad for you. I even grew to love you a little bit. But you know what? The fact is, Jeff, you were never a husband. You... You were always this little mama's boy. But your mommy just never could acknowledge you. God. She won't even look you in the face. Anyways, our marriage is water under the bridge. Almost. So, is she here? Is who here? My mother? You made a girlfriend. Yeah, Kim, as a matter of fact, she is here. Yeah? Where is she, huh? Uh, right now, she's out in the shed, working on a set of antique chairs. She's out in the shed? In the dark? What do you mean, in the dark? Jeff, it's dark out there. Are you delusional now, too? Would you like to meet her? You know what, Jeff? I don't think so. I'll just leave you two to your little renaissance fairy tales, okay? Just make sure you make it on the 16th to finalize everything. Yeah, yeah, Kim. A and what if I don't? You don't make it on the 16th. I will sue your ass for everything you have left. I will own this pigsty, and I'll turn it into a little wine field. You can go live with your Jesus freak mommy. You leave my mother out of this, Kim. She's crazy and you know that. Crazy? Yeah, you're both crazy. Crazy and delusional. Uh, I'm a lot better now. No. Not really, Jeff. You're just better than you were when I first met you. When I first met you, I was fucked up from Stephen's death. Yeah, I know. Both you and your mother. God, you were a field day for the psychiatrists.
So why in the hell did you ever get involved with me then, Kim? Because... Because... I thought I saw something good in you. But you know what? You just could never face the truth. What truth? You know what, Jeff? Forget no, about Kim, it. No, Kim, what truth? What truth? Jeff, I really have to go. No, no, Kim, what, what truth are you talking about? Get your fucking pants off me, you freak. Rules of the Ouija. One, never ask about God. Two, never ask when you're going to die. Three, never ask where the gold is buried. Four, never play a lot. I hope you don't mind. I let myself in the back. I love a man that brings me coffee in the morning. Did I surprise you last night? Yeah, a little. Good, I wanted it that way. How did you get here? When? I parked uh, my car at the end of the road and I changed in your shed. I was afraid you were gonna see the lights on out back. I did see it. You know, I thought it was one of those automatic light things. I haven't checked everything out yet. I'm still, still exploring around here a bit, you know? Hey, Jeff. Was there someone here last night before I got here? That was my ex. Oh, I see. Uh, we ended up fighting. I don't even know why she came out here, to be honest with you. Because she still loves you. <laughs> Not a chance in hell. No, our divorce is final on the 16th, and I think she probably just wanted to see what else I've gotten so she could try to take that from me, too. Bitter, huh? Whatever, I just, I'm glad she's gone and you're here. Me too, Jeff. Me too. Hmm. Kristen? Yes? Did I take the Ouija board home with me the other night? Of course you did. Why isn't it here? Yeah, it's here. It's just, I don't remember taking it, that's all. Well, I grabbed it. But how did it get back in the trunk then? Well, you must have put it there, silly, or maybe Captain Howdy did it. I just don't remember doing that. Well, you must have. But in the trunk, which was in the van, which was sitting with a flat tire. Jeff, what's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter. I just don't know how in the fuck it got in there. Well, I don't fucking know either. Well, maybe I should ask Captain Howdy. Jeff, what the hell? If you're accusing me of something, just spit it out. No, no. I'm not accusing you of anything, Kristen. I would never take anything from you, Jeff. Not ever. I know, Kristen. I know you wouldn't. It's just that I'm confusing things lately, and it's, it's driving me crazy. Well, you've been under a lot of stress lately. I mean, moving stressful, and the divorce, for God's sakes, is stressful. Yeah, and that damn Ouija board. It's just a game. Yeah, but ever since we played with that thing, I just... I haven't felt the same. Jeff, look, it's just a game. It's not some spiritual pathway to anything. 
Yeah, well, if that's the case, then why did it spell out pawn then? Well, it must be something in your subconscious. What are you saying, Kristen? I mean, it, it must be something in your mind that's, that's making you think these things. No, no, no. That fucking thing is evil. Uh, Jeff, you really need to talk to someone about this. I am, Kristen. I'm talking to you. No, you're not talking to me. You're talking at me. <laughs> Kristen, you insisted that we play with the damn thing, and now you're telling me that I need help. You need to chill out. That's what you need. <sighs> You want to play spiritual goddess, or are you trying to be my fucking shrink? Trying to be your friend. Yeah, well, friends don't fuck with people's heads. What the hell's wrong with you? Why are you asking about my brother's death? I'm not. I didn't even mention it. Yeah, well, it's that, that Ouija board. That's your way of fucking with my head. What in God's name are you talking about? I, I, you're twisted. Don't bring God into this. I get enough of that shit from my mother. You know, you're freaking me out. I, I'm just going to go. Fine, go. <laughs> You know what, Jeff? Just remember, I'm the only one that ever loved you. Kristen's helper, Jackie. Where's Kristen? Excuse me? Where's Kristen? Where is she? Who are you? Jeff, I'm Jeff. Where is she at? Mr. Seriously, who the hell are you? I'm Jeff. Jeff Barron. I'm looking for Kristen. Your boss, you know. Where is she? Look, I'm my own boss. Look, cut the bullshit philosophy and, and tell me where she's at. I, I gotta find her. Look. My husband Carter and I have owned this store for 10 years now. There's never been a Christian work here, and if you don't get the hell out of here, I'm gonna call the police right now.
mother, mom, mom, I need to talk to you. Come to finally join us, Jeff. Mom, I need to ask you something. It's a beautiful day, Jeff. Won't you enjoy it with us? Mom, I need to ask you something. What, Jeff? What happened to Stephen? Why, whatever do you mean? What happened? What really happened the day Stephen died? Stephen. Oh, my little boy. Yes, Mom, your little boy. Why, he drowned, Jeff. I know he drowned, Mother. He was to be with God sooner than us. That's all, Jeff. Mother, what happened? What happened? You know what happened. Never mind, Mom. Never mind, Mom. Just, just, just forget it. I'm. I'm going to the hospital and I'm, I'm going to talk to Thomas. I need to know what really happened to Stephen. I need to know it. Thomas, Thomas will talk to me. He can't talk to you, Jeff. He can't even talk anymore. He's gotten worse. He lost his speech entirely a while ago. Not that you would know. You never go see him. You told me, you told me that they said I shouldn't go see him. The doctors, you, you said they, that they said it'd be better for Thomas if I didn't go see him. That's what you said. No, you shouldn't go. Why not? Because, Jeff, because. <laughs> because why? Why the fuck not? Don't use such filth to me. I'm going to the hospital and I'm talking to Thomas. I, something's missing about that day. The Ouija board told me so. What? Never mind. Jeff, they used one of those things to try to communicate with Steven. What things? One of those Ouija boards, the devil's tool. What are you talking about, Mom? They tried everything that day to communicate with him. Keyboards, flashcards, you name it. Then they tried one of those Ouija boards. Thomas liked it. The doctor said it was like a game for him. It made him open up. Well, it made the devil come and tell him lies. He called the devil Captain Howdy. Lies? Mother, what lies? Lies, Jeff, lies. What, what lies, Mother? Thomas said that you did it. Did what? What the fuck? Will you spit it out for God's sake? You killed Stephen. You held him under the water that day. You watched him die. You were jealous. Are you crazy? Yeah, we're both crazy, Jeff. But I'm saved and you're not. You just remember, I'm the only one that ever loved you. The Sunshine House was pleasant in the summertime. The old wood fence down the lane made animal shapes in the shadows just around dusk. I continued painting as the pleasant thoughts crossed my mind. I was almost through with it. You have to know when to stop, I thought to myself, referring to the idea that an artist must know when one has done enough. I had finally painted it, the picture of the area just outside of the suburbs where the pavement met the west and the trees mocked every building just beyond the pond. Finally, it was just me and mother, the only one who ever really loved me. I'm so glad you decided to join us, Jeff.